Hello, it's Justin McDowell, and uh, I am making a Versus video. Um, I've been playing Versus for uh, about a year now, and um, I've been really enjoying it, especially the, the direction of the new cards. I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, deck that I put together called Shrink, Shrank, Shrunk. When I'm doing my deck building, I'm tr tr basically thinking of who my audience is, which is my friends playing around a kitchen table. Um, I'm not thinking too much about the tournament scene, and so I just kind of want to have fun and I want to build, um, I guess what I would call kind of novelty decks. And so I'm looking for certain keywords or s certain power types that would have some fun synergy together that would just be either fun to play or, in this case, annoy my opponent. Um, so with Shrink, Shrank, Shrunk, it started out as a novelty deck, but it actually has been pretty competitive, um, at least at the kitchen table. I have no guarantees that it's going to work in a tournament. Probably won't, but um, it's been really fun to to challenge my my friends to try to take this, this uh, nuisance of a deck down. And so far, it hasn't lost yet. Um, I've played three or four games with it, <clears throat> so it's not like super well tested, but it has been a lot of fun, and every time I mention it, uh, my friends roll their eyes. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So, I chose Spider-Man as my main character because of his level up ability. Um, at the start of, or at the end of your turn, Spidey gains 1 XP for each face-up supporting character on your side. And you're going to see that I, ha I will have uh, particularly pers persistent face um, supporting characters. So I thought that Spider-Man would be a good, Avengers Spider-Man would be a good, um, good, have good synergy with that. And he's a 2-5 starting uh, attack and defense, and he's got 5 health. And then when he levels up, he's got greater responsibility. So I'm using the level 3 Spider-Man instead of the level 2. So again, um, gotta have face-up supporting characters on my side. And he levels up again from a 410, which is pretty massive defense, um, especially for a level 2. And that makes him really hard to take down. So when he levels up, he goes up to 611. Um, 11 defense, just even a little bit nastier. And he finally unlocks his um, superpower, level up superpower, his amazing friends. Uh, during the build phase, pay an insight or intellect. I forget which one. It is. I think intellect. Pay an intellect. Uh, which is a yellow, draw a card for each face-up supporting character on your side. So if you can get lots of face-up characters, you're going to draw lots of cards. And like I said, uh, I chose some particularly persistent supporting characters to help um, make that uh, make those draws pretty big. Um, and then, of course, he gains an additional health as well. So Spidey's going to be my main character. Uh, I got the idea for this, I, I had this idea a little bit early, earlier, but um, there weren't enough cards to support it, um, but it was the shrink keyword. So I've got Black Ant. Um, when Crossover came out late last year, uh, he had shrink, and that's when I was like, okay, we've got three supporting characters that are a one drop, one cost character, and um, they each have shrink. Uh, which means when they get attacked the first time each turn, you may cancel the combat. So I was like, okay, that's enough to build a theme around it. You, you could kind of do it with two, but three was definitely going to be like, this is what this deck is about. Um, so Black Ant in particular, he's a 1-1, one, one, so he's not very strong. Um, and he has life model decoy for a might. Put three plus one plus one counters on Black Ant for each Black Ant supporting character in your KO pile. And, conveniently, he has two health, which makes him especially insidious because um, he you have to basically attack him four times to take him down, and he's a 1-1, one, one, one cost character. So he's going to be real annoying for your opponents. And furthermore, if you get multiples of those in your KO pile, then you can use those mites for, to use his superpower to make him even more powerful. But with that said, there's a lot of might in this deck, and so it might, it might 
be better well spent in other places. Um, Spider-Man, for example, uses um, might for his great power, power, um, but I still think there are better places to spend those than um, necessarily either of those. Although, uh, definitely, if you need to, go for it. And so I've got four black ants to start out as a one cost. And then next we have the original Shrinker, Ant-Man. Uh, I got four of those. The first time he's attacked each turn, you may cancel the combat. So he just has Shrink. Um, he's a little bit more powerful. He's a 2-2 two, two, um, character. So he's got two attack, two uh, defense, and only one health. Um, some people say he's the worst of the Shrinkers. But uh, in this deck, he, has, he also has the advantage of being an Avenger. This is going to be a primarily Avengers-themed deck. It's not mono, because Black Ant has Hydra. But um, because he's an Avenger, then he can team attack, which um, can come in handy. Uh, with, he can team attack with most of the other characters in this deck. After that, I have yet another one cost, Shrinker. Our final one, Wasp. When she appears, she has Sting, put a minus one, minus one counter on an enemy character, and she has Shrink as well. She's a one, two character with Flight, and she's on A4, so she's not really going to be able to team attack. Um, but again, we're not worried about that, we're worried about Shrinking. And so we've got uh, four of those in there as well. Um, this one's a blank one. I'm, it's currently, I have a wasp in my singularity deck, and I'm, I didn't decided not to unsleeve it for this. But there you have it, 12 one-cost characters um, starting out this deck. So since we have so many low-cost characters, I don't have any, any two-cost characters, because I want to start to ramp up the, the effects of um, having stronger characters um, to counterbalance the, the vast number of the one-drop one characters, because most people don't have more than four in their deck. Or they might hit six, but uh, definitely don't get up to 12, which is kind of nuts. But I assure you, it, it, it works pretty well. So once we get up to turn three, we can drop out Howard the Duck. And he has, he's, he's got range. He has a five attack, which is pretty good, and a two defense. Um, not a huge defense, but that range can keep him alive for a lot longer. And Duck, his keyword, first keyword power is kind of like shrink on steroids. So when Howard is attacked, you may exhaust him if you do the attackers can't strike this combat. So it's basically like shrinking, but it doesn't cancel the combat. And Howard the Duck gets to strike back with his five attack. Um, so he can actually, uh, instead of tying your opponent up, he can actually take them out while he's doing it. And then he also has and proud of it at the end of your turn, ready Howard. So you can exhaust him to attack, and then at the end of the turn you can ready him, and then he's ready to duck when your opponent tries to attack him the first time. So uh, Howard the Duck, he's, he's, he came with Galactic Guardians. He is definitely a very fun addition to this deck, and um, my friends are especially annoyed that I that I added him to this this particular deck. So uh, that is turn three, or at least the three cost characters. After that, I'm keeping it Avengers um, Mono, I think for the rest of the deck. I think there's just those, those two characters, Wasp and Black Ant, are the only ones that are not Avengers. Um, so that makes team attacking really, really easy. So I decided to do Captain Britain. Uh, he has the power, he has uh, flight and range, he's a 4-4 four, four, and 2 health, and when he gets powered up, you can put two extra plus one, plus one counters on him. So if you power him up once, he becomes a 7-7, seven, seven, um, which is, is pretty good. Uh, he's useful for blocking with flight, he's useful for attacking with range, um, overall he's, he's a pretty versatile character. And with all of the cards that you're going to be drawing with his amazing friends, it's not too difficult to power him up. Although you may not be doing that early if you're using him early in the game. Then we got someone else who's difficult to take down. Luke Cage. He has the superpower Impervious Skin. 
So any combat, so even when he's defending or if he's attacking, if Luke Cage gets stunned during this combat, he doesn't receive a wound, which um, is pretty nice. This deck's going to be loaded down with greens, so I was saying you might want to save your greens, not use them on Black Ant. Well, Luke Cage is the guy that you want to be using those greens on because you can stick him in the front row. He's a pretty good attacker, and you can keep him alive for a long time um, with this deck, and so it's really nice. So I've got four total Luke Cages in this one. He's got seven attack, six defense. Um, he can really be annoying. He will still get stunned, so you'll still flip him over. So if he's protecting someone, your opponent will be able to get to the back row. But um, at least he'll come back and um, continue to be a pain in the opponent's ass, which is the whole point of this deck. Because I'm a good person. So you're going to be... I've played games where I've, I've used a lot of greens pretty quickly because of Luke Cage. And so uh, if I want to use them for great power for example, or if I want to use them for Black Ant, or if I want to keep using them for Luke Cage, we got to keep those green, keep him in the green and keep him in the mites. Uh, and so that's why we have Iron Man, of course. If, if we're going Avengers, mostly mono, Iron Man's pretty essential. He's got flight and range as well, so he's good for protecting your Spider-Man while he's in the back row. He has a five attack, a seven defense, and his keyword power is inventive. When he appears, you may turn one of your face-down locations face-up. So that could be Avengers Mansion or, um, or just a regular basic location. But either way, uh, he's definitely useful to have four of. And again, I'm using him in singularity, so one of my sleeves is empty right now. But Iron Man's a good character for this deck to keep Luke Cage impervious um, by by flipping those mites back over to be able to use them again. And then we get to the sevens. So I threw a Hulk in there. When I originally built this deck, it was, uh, I think, two Hulks and two Red Skulls. Um, you, can see, you can see this deck on TCG Browser, but it's, it's been updated. TCG Browser hasn't been updated with Galactic Guardians and um, the, newer, the newer sets. And so I can't, unfortunately, update it to the strongest it's going to be with Howard the Duck and everything like that. Um, but I had some Hulk and Red Skull in there, and now I just have one single Hulk because there are some other better cards that I think um, are going to be better for this deck, mainly because Hulk also uses Might. And um, by the time he comes out, you might be a little bit thin on Might depending on how many times you've used it for Luke Cage. So he might not be as good as he could be just because you, it's there's a lot of cards using might in this game. So he has incredible power. It's a superpower in your main phase. You can spend a might and if Hulk has a wound, put seven plus one plus one counters on him. He has seven attack and seven defense ordinarily, which is, you know, it's it's he's a seven cost, so that's fine. But um, if you put seven plus one plus one counters on him while he has a wound, then he becomes 14-14. And of course he has two health, so he can, uh, he can stay alive at least one turn, presumably. So he could become kind of a nasty monster. But I only have one of Hulk in this deck. So I swapped out the other Hulks for Hyperion, one of the new uh, Cosmic Avengers. So Hyperion... He's, a, he's a, he quickly become a new fan favorite. He's got flight and range, which again is, is great for protection. 10 attack, 10 defense, so he's, he's a massive guy. Hulk had seven, if you remember, and he's got 10, and they're both seven cost characters, so you can already see that um, Hyperion's coming out of the gate swinging a lot harder. And then he has the just ridiculous keyword power, Eternal. If Hyperion would leave play, you may put him into his owner's hand instead. Uh, and so he just, you know, gets knocked out, he comes back, gets knocked out, he comes back. Um, the only way to turn that off is for your opponent to pay uh, an energy, which is a blue, because of his reliance on solar energy. When Hyperion enters combat, an enemy main character on that side may pay an energy. If they do, Hyperion loses and can't gain eternal. And that's why I've put two of him 
in there because if he gets knocked out for good, then it's nice to have uh, another one and make your opponent pay another en energy if, uh, if they want to get rid of him. So uh, that's why I included, and he doesn't require any additional mites or intellects or any other superpower locations or anything like that. So he's definitely a good one. And then, of course, turn eight, the new classic, Gilgamesh, another Eternal. He's got flight, and he's 16 attack, 16 defense, and all you have to do is say Gilgamesh, and you won't lose Eternal. So there's, I think, one card in the Buffy set that would prevent you from, from speaking. So basically, once he's out, then he's out for good. I guess until Dark Phoenix comes, I suppose, and removes keywords from the game. But that is where this curve ends, it ends with Gilgamesh. Dark Phoenix is not in this deck. I might put her in if I was going to be more competitive, but again, this is mostly just to annoy my friends. Although Dark Phoenix is very annoying, so maybe I should reconsider that. That's not the last cost though, because this has definitely annoyed my friends, the Serpent Crown. Uh, one of a kind, you can only have one in your deck. Unwanted gift keyword equip the serpent crown to an unequipped enemy supporting character and then the other keyword under sets control When you equip this to an enemy supporting character move that character to your side When this is unequipped from that character move it to its owner's side So this is coming in pretty late game and you definitely want to use it wisely Say if your opponent brings out a Gilgamesh then you want to serpent crown that Gilgamesh and uh, and steal it away and I had a, I had a game-winning move where, I, where Serpent Crown was at the bottom of my deck. And I was drawing cards because I had lots of spider friends out. And on the, on the last possible turn, before I was going to get destroyed, I pulled out Serpent Crown. And I stole their Black Heart away. And basically I was able to win the game with that. So Serpent Crown has been very good to me over, over the, the last few months. So those are all the things that are going to use resource points to be brought out. And of course, we have some plot twists in here. And with all of these shrinkers canceling combat, we just want to make sure that you know other other uh, supporting characters don't don't get jealous. And we got a whole array of think again to um, cancel the combat for anyone else in the game, including Spider-Man or uh, if we want to uh, say Ant-Man again, if he wants to cancel a, a second combat. So yeah, just continuing to avoid combat altogether with <laughs> this crazy deck. And after that, we've got the rest of the Avengers plot twists. So Earth's Mightiest Heroes, choose a character to get plus two, plus two this combat. Just kind of in a, a, a basic Avengers plot twist. We don't have the Avenge loyalty plot twist because it's not a loyalty deck, but we do have the other one, which is Stark Tech. Four of those. Put a plus one, plus one counter on a character on your side. It gains range this turn. I wasn't super sure how I was going to use this, but most of the time when I've used it, it is to put it on Spider-Man because a lot of the time I'm protecting him in the back row. It sometimes takes a little while for him to level up. And um, so he gets, he gets down there and wounds a little bit. But um, being able to give him range allows him to attack from the back. He has such a high defense that it's not often that opponents are able to strike back at him, so it has actually turned out pretty well. And then with the plus one, plus one counter, he becomes 712 or 813, and his defense just keeps creeping up and up and up, and he just gets harder and harder to hit. But you could use these on any any other character, and, and it can be, it can definitely be useful at the right time. So that's good, and I got a couple instances of Loyal Soldiers. So choose a team affiliation. If all characters on your side have that team affiliation, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of them. It's not a loyalty deck, but there are so many Avengers and there are so few of the, um, there's just one of the Hydra and one of the A-Force that most of the time you'll be able to get loyal soldiers off. Although if you got Wasp out there and you're trying to use this, then uh, you're gonna regret that your opponent has to attack her twice. Uh, just to get her off the, the field. So um, that's why there's only two of those in here. Just because we don't want a dead hand. And then finally, a Savage Surprise. Just 
just because it always comes in handy to be able to strike back at your opponent and get plus four attack. Um, definitely helps when you're defending. And then we finally get to the locations. So there's only 12 locations, but there's not, uh, honestly, not a lot of options anyway, because I think the only superpowers used in this setup are every, all the supporting characters use might, and then Spider-Man uses might and the intellect superpowers locations. So of course we've got four Avengers Mansion, because that's kind of obvious. And then we've got four fortresses, four might cards, and then four intellect cards. And that's basically the deck. I'm playing with Spider-Man, which is uh, fun because, again, drawing heaps of cards has been, you know, if you, the more cards you have, the more advantage you have. Um, you got to be careful of fighting against decks like Karnak, who can split your deck in half, and that's gonna that's gonna really hurt. Or Emma Frost, who causes you to discard your hand and draw a new one. And if you have 20 cards in your hand and you've got 15 cards left in your deck, then that puts you at a disadvantage. So sometimes he can get away get away from you, but generally he has been uh, really good for me. I have tried it with Captain Marvel, the new Captain Marvel from Cosmic Avengers. If you're going to do that, then you don't need the intellect, but you will need the skill locations. So you'll want to swap out all of the intellect locations for the skill locations and then Captain Marvel's probably going to be a bit more aggressive probably going to be a bit more tournament worthy if that's what you're hoping to do but overall uh, like I said this this deck has been really fun to play uh, it really annoys your opponents um, and the the worst the worst ones are the array of of shrinkers um, Howard the Duck and his duck ability, and Luke Cage being able to go impervious and stay out on the field for, for so long. It just makes for a really fun, fun time, but it also will cost you your friends. So yeah, that's my, that's my first real novelty deck. I'm, I'm looking for, looking out for more ideas for something new to do after this. I've got a few things in my head but well at least one thing in my head but I don't have any I don't have it built out yet so I'm, I'm gonna keep it a secret for now and you know I don't know if I can continue to find fun things like this but that's that's what makes it fun for me so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep looking for these little edge edge cases that I can try to exploit so yeah I hope you like the video feel free to leave a comment let me know if you think that I can tweak the deck up and in one way or another, but otherwise uh, I'll see you the next time I do something like this.